Good day, my name's Robert Mitchell. This is my movie. You Bring a Horse for Me Productions is uh, an ode to one of my favorite films of all time, Once Upon a Time in the West. Charles Bronson gets off a train. There's three bounty hunters across from him. He's like, you bring a horse for me. They look at each other and laugh. It looks like we're shy one horse. He shakes his head and says, you brought two too many. So you bring a horse for me, Productions. As you saw, uh, the film uh, had a pretty good festival run. Won a couple of awards around the world in Germany and Tokyo. Very appreciative of that. So this film started in September of 2021. I attended TIFF online, and I was getting antsy, and I'm like, I really need to make a movie for myself. So I had done a couple of commercials with this character, Bobby Diamonds. Bobby Diamonds is actually my poker nickname that was bestowed upon me about 25 years ago. So he's always just been this fictional character and my actual poker persona. Diamonds, it's a tournament life. So using the two commercials I had made in the summer of 2021, uh, that was kind of my jump off point. So this scene here was initially near the very end of the movie, and I edited the movie. The movie was about shot in a week, and did a couple of pickup shots that I needed. And the editing kind of went off and on for about two months. And that initial scene where he loses at that poker tournament, that was actually at the end of the film. And about my fourth or fifth pass putting this film together, I'm like, no, that needs to be, that's the impetus that needs to be at the starting of the film. So here we have this quote that I've always loved by one of my favorite poker players, poker commentators, poker writers, Jesse May. And this was actually the first shot of the movie uh, that I actually shot physically of me lying in bed. And then I kind of just went all the way around from that. This is a, a nice piece of business I always loved. Little practical special effects flying over the Las Vegas sign, which is actually a belt buckle stuck in the dirt. And Bruto Poodle Pictures is a uh, art collective based in South Texas who I collaborated with to bring this picture to uh, reality. I always like this uh, opening music that I found using uh, Splice. They have a huge amount of licensed music. That took a long time to find music that worked for me. I love this title card of the Bobby Diamond story. I slept for six. So this shot here, the fan and the helicopter sound, is definitely my ode to one of my favorite films of all time, Apocalypse Now. Three playing hand after hand after hand. And then the scene kind of reminded me of, you know, Willard sitting there in Vietnam saying when he was in Nam, he wants to be back home, and when he's back home, he wants to be back in Nam. And kind of Bobby Diamonds, when he's in action, he wants to, you know, he's been playing for days on end. And then as soon as he gets home, he's like, I want to be back in action. Now, this, uh, uh, this scene I had in the film, cut it out of the film, put it back in the film. Well, Brunson, that said, poker is war. People only pretend it's a game. And uh, that's what I do when I'm out here running. I visualize, uh, well, what was that movie? Chariots of Fire. So when I'm out here running, that's what I visualize. I visualize chariots on fire. Yeah. So uh, here's a poker ode, the dead man's hand that was held uh, purportedly by Wild Bill Hickok when he was shot dead playing a uh, five card draw, the aces and eights. That's, a good first lesson. That's the funny part about this movie is uh, I was going to only create a movie about the fictional character Bobby Diamonds and then more and more of my actual life seeped into the movie as I was making it. Grandfather Claude that came up with the... And that's what's funny. I mean, those who know me uh, have a pretty good idea what's true and what isn't. But my grandfather's... The so Claude is actually my great-grandfather's name. Declarative statement at the time that for the first year that he was saying I'm all in, he actually never had to show his cards at showdown because everybody believed that he had the goods. Who am I? That is a good question. I guarantee you've never heard of me. Which is kind of funny that Brutal Poodle decided to do a documentary on me. Anyway, my name's Bobby Diamonds. I've been playing underground poker for over 23 years. So that's a real photo of me in 1999 in Toronto. The, a lot of, almost, all these photos are real. Toronto. And again, this is the reality uh, seeping in with the fiction. I used to be a bartender in a cowboy bar in Etobicoke, a suburb of Toronto. This is in Louisville, Kentucky at Hunter S. Thompson Fest. That's at the Bad Batch Texas premiere. That's me in 2016, 
on the red carpet in Toronto. Started dating, we got married. She's the love of my life, her name's Sarah. Uh, I really like this sequence. That's me at the inauguration in 2017. And that's me meeting uh, Joe Biden in Nashville in uh, also 2017. I like that shot, that gutter thon mug. Uh, shout out to my friend Carol Borden, who is the editor of the Cultural Gutter, who's always been supportive. I've written a couple of articles for. This is a great sequence talking about uh, Pan who came into our lives. Third time he came back and he was looking very ill and we took him in and we got him to the vet and got him a clean bill of health. I joked that uh, we didn't adopt him, he adopted us. Now the three of us are family. All the endorsements and television appearances took me away from the game. Ultimately, it was all those distractions that led me to lose that day in Dilly, Texas. After that loss, I reassessed. I decided to leave public life and focus only on my family and continue my passion for the game. So uh, this is a, a sequence that I absolutely love. It was way longer at one point, but I'm like, that had to be tightened up. And an ode to one of my favorite writers of all time, Hunter Thompson. So uh, this sequence is directly inspired by the Simpsons episode, The Mysterious Voyage of Homer Simpson, where he eats a bunch of uh, crazy peppers at a chili cook-off and then goes on a hallucinatory trip. And it's also directly influenced by Gaspar Noe, in particular, uh, Enter the Void. So this is the Simpsons meeting Enter the Void. What am I supposed to do? Raise. That snake there is about a four or five foot rats, uh, four foot length uh, rat snake that a couple months later wound up in my bathroom on the night of my online premiere. It had been in there for a couple of months and I finally got it on the night of my online premiere after I did the premiere online. And then I got it out. We have video of me releasing it back into the wild. <laughs> But yeah, I absolutely love this sequence. And uh, I initially shot this and I had my jeans on. I went back in and looked at the footage. I'm like, nah, I, I have to be naked. I'm absolutely 100% uh, buck ass naked there. And that makes that a lot funnier to me. And you can, you know, you just see that little line where, of course, there's no underwear. It makes it way funnier to me. That always gets a laugh, too, of Thursday jetting right into Friday. And everybody's like, what the fuck? What happened to Thursday? When I was younger, I was always chasing the accolades of others. Now that I've gotten no my wife and I had a conversation about that. Would a guy who's married be that fucked up? And I'm like, I think some people that are married are that fucked up. Now here we hear the helicopter sound back in the mirror. And it's a, another throwback to Apocalypse Now. And of course that scene with uh, Willard played by Martin Sheen. He uh, is uh, fucked up and smashes the mirror. Bobby Diamonds is staring in the mirror. But of course he's composed professional poker player. So he's contained in his emotions and ready to go to the next tournament. Now, this shot was set up by my wife, Sarah. And uh, the audio was pretty complicated. So that took a bit of work to sync the audio from uh, the one phone that's positioned all the way back here. Definitely provides uh, the heart of the movie, that scene with the three of us together. And I love this shot with uh, Sarah and Pan in the rearview mirror. And now he puts on the sunglasses and he's now Bobby Diamonds again. He's no longer Robert Mitchell. My share of ups and downs as I reflect on my life. I've always, I love this shot a lot, lot too. All of this was completely shot by me except for this uh, shot that I just talked about that was set up by Sarah, but all of this was shot by me. That was very difficult to uh, be in front of the camera the, most of this movie and shoot it all. There's a lot of running back and looking at what the footage looked like and reshooting. There's uh, times I look at this movie and I'm like, you know, it's plenty weird. And then there's other times I'll revisit the movie. I'm like, ah, this movie's just not weird enough. So that fluctuates a lot. Back in 1999, it was my mom that got me the job in the bar in Toronto where I learned how to play Texas Hold'em. There you go. Kathy Mitchell, my mom. And uh, I want to thank everybody who supported the movie uh, throughout the making of it when I showed some friends and they gave me some uh, their thoughts on it. There's me adjusting a camera while driving. And uh, shout out to Ed Bridal, my first ever film uh, teacher. We're good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, it was a really cool experience. Except for that part where you were filming me when I was sleeping. That was pretty fucking weird. The Bobby Diamond story.